everyone, and welcome to Metropolitan State. Uh -oh. Call it in the air, please. Heads. Heads, he calls. Hey, listen now. Four quarters, 60 minutes, and we're the champions. Yeah! Two teams dominated pro football in 1977. One was totally predictable, the other totally unexpected. The Denver Broncos had not won a single title in their 18-year history, but after waiting patiently for almost two decades, broken promises became answered prayers for Bronco fans as their team unseated a world champion and captured the AFC championship. The sun never sets on the Dallas Cowboy Empire, and once again they bask in the afterglow of a championship season. Staubach has him up to the line of scrimmage. Got Drew Pearson about 10 yards wide to the left. Again, Roger back to throw, pumps it once, sends it long for Dupree, and is caught for a touchdown. What can you say? This is complete, total, utter domination. Defense stood head and shoulders above offense in 1977. The bottom line proved that defenses were tough to budge and even tougher to score points against this past season. From either the traditional 4-3 or the unconventional but increasingly popular 3-4, defenses rocked offenses back on their heels and flat on their backs. Blockers were outnumbered and overpowered, and quarterbacks became sitting ducks in the shambles of the pass pocket. With quarterbacks being tossed around like tumbleweeds, things were bound to come to a head. The long bomb, though still not a dinosaur from football's past, was in danger of becoming extinct. No receiver in the NFL gained over 900 yards, when 1,000 used to be the measure of true excellence. Even the old tried and true throw to the post succeeded as much by luck as by design. When straight-up orthodox football failed, offenses created more innovative ways to spread open a defense. It takes a special individual to circumnavigate a football field and find his way home to six points. Such a man as the Houston Oilers' Billy Johnson. Johnson is pro football's long-distance runner and the last of a dying breed, the triple threat. As a ball carrier, he averaged over 17 yards a carry and scored a 61-yard touchdown. As a pass receiver, Billy J averaged over 20 yards a reception and caught three touchdowns. His longest, a 71-yarder. The six-point dance was Billy's signature, but his trademark was returning kickoffs and punts, something no one did any better. Number 84 led the NFL in punt returns and scored two touchdowns his longest an 87-yard cross-country spectacular against the Seattle Seahawks.
an age of specialists, tiny Billy Johnson was a virtuoso as he scored touchdowns running, receiving, and returning and averaged a gaudy 60 yards in so doing. The value of a one-man band cannot be overestimated. The Chicago Bears were a team who played notably off-key for many seasons until the dazzle of Walter Payton almost single-handedly carried them to the playoffs. Sweet Walter set a single-game rushing record of 275 yards and for most of the year threatened to erase O.J. Simpson's single-season mark of 2,003 yards. Peyton's unique talents overcame such glaring bear deficiencies as a lack of a proven quarterback and a championship-caliber defense to become pro football's premier running back. Peyton fell short of O.J.'s record, and so too did the Bears' title dreams, which were cruelly crushed by the doomsday defense of the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs. Defense, 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 defense. <laughs> cover, 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 cover! <laughs> In 1977, Tom Landry had many reasons to smile. His defense was ranked number one in the NFL, and so too was an offense generaled by calm and collected Roger Staubach. The Cowboys' horn of plenty spilled to overflowing with the addition of number 33, Tony Dorsett, who gave them the one element they have historically lacked, 1,000 yards of breakaway speed. Off goes to Dorset, dances into the secondary and heads left. The 30, the 40, comes right to the 50, to the 40. He's going to score an 84-yard touchdown. Tony Dorset, 84 yards on the touchdown. While Dorset cemented an already solid team, the arrival of Joe Namath in Los Angeles was heralded as a clarion call to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately for the Rams, while the brain was still keen, the body was not, and the team stumbled steadily backward in forced retreat. The king was dead. Long live the king. Fortunately for the Rams, young and princely Pat Hayden, number 11, sprightly stepped in and led them to the NFC Western title and a crushing 35-3 victory over the Minnesota Vikings. After the Ram loss, many condemned the antique Vikings as throwaway junk. But the purple proved resilient and bounced back into contention like a rubber ball. With each victory, they did not appear to be so old after all. Even the crucial loss of quarterback Fran Tarkenton failed to disrupt their drive to the NFC Central title which was climaxed by a heroic rally that saw them transform a 24-0 San Francisco 49er lead into a 28-27 victory. The Vikings were champions of the Central again. A reprieve, many thought, before their burial in their playoff rematch with the Rams. It was the Norse custom to bury Vikings aboard a burning ship at sea. But in the Coliseum, the game proved a soggy funeral for the Rams' Super Bowl ambitions. Minnesota won 14-7. 
And instead of the dispirited Rams, it was the Vikings who would contest the mighty Dallas Cowboys for the NFC Championship. At Texas Stadium, the only storybook finish was authored by the Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys won convincingly 27-6 and swept into the Super Bowl for the fourth time in their history. As defending Super Bowl champions, the Oakland Raiders were expected to collect another AFC Western title by default. They had a premier quarterback in number 12, Ken Stabler, and the NFC's best tight end, number 87, Dave Casper. This combination led Oakland to an 11-3 record, good enough to win the title most seasons, but not in 1977, as the proud Raiders fell a game short of the Cinderella Denver Broncos. The team's success, coupled with the boundless enthusiasm of their fans, created the season-long craziness called Broncomania. It began as a love affair with a team and mushroomed into a social epidemic. new Broncos touched off the rages of Bronco mania and blazed a path to a championship. One was head coach Robert Red Miller, who cast away the doubts by the sheer force of his personality. The other was born-again quarterback Craig Morton, whose faultless, if conservative, leadership shepherded Denver to its first championship. Denver rode on a roller coaster of unbridled enthusiasm. The Cincinnati Bengals, some said, lacked the emotion to win a title in the AFC Central. But in the 13th week, they overcame the jinx of the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team they had not beaten in six straight games. With their 17-10 victory, they needed only to defeat the Houston Oilers in the 14th week to capture the AFC Central. As Ken Anderson's pocket collapsed, so too did the season, as the Bengals lost 21-16 and handed the championship to the Pittsburgh Steelers, whose sunny smiles obscured the darker troubles of a chaotic year. Miami Dolphins were expected to swim upstream, fighting the heavy tides in the AFC East. Don Shula is a positive thinker and certifiably a coaching genius, and his surprising team was in the thick of the fight throughout the 1977 season. The Dolphins played exciting, wide-open football. Unfortunately for them, they were in a division with a country boy named Burt Jones, who threw the ball a country mile for the Baltimore Colts. To 
win the East, Baltimore had to defeat the New England Patriots in the season's 14th week. Third and 18 from the 22. Here comes a blitz. They pick it up now. Another blitz. Jones throws down the middle. Raymond Chester's got it. Chester to the 20. Chester to the 10. To the 5. Scores. They played their hearts out, but the Colts have won the game. It is all over. Baltimore's Memorial Stadium is an outdoor insane asylum. Memorial Stadium rockets to great cheers for a deserving, very courageous, and most importantly, victorious Baltimore Colt football team. The Colts' 30-24 victory over New England put them into the playoffs, where they faced the Oakland Raiders and the slingshot passing accuracy of Ken Stabler. No man was more responsible for the Raiders' ultimate victory than tight end Dave Casper, number 87. Casper helped send the game into its first overtime when this magnificent catch led to a game-tying field goal. Then in the second overtime, after 75 minutes and 43 seconds of play, Casper's touchdown catch ended the third longest game in NFL history, as Oakland defeated Baltimore 37 to 31. The Raiders then traveled to the Mile High City to face Denver and 75,000 Bronco Maniacs for the AFC Championship. Craig Morton's first completion of the day resulted in a 74-yard touchdown by Haven Moses, number 25. And the Denver Broncos never had to look back on this, the brightest day in their 18-year history. Each week during the regular season, everyone predicted that the Broncos would stumble and fall. But here in 1977's 16th week, their path ran straight and smooth and led directly to Super Bowl XII. Now, four quarters, 60 minutes, and we're the champions. Yeah! All right, let's go, baby! The question in Super Bowl XII was whether Denver's emotional binge outweighed Dallas' clear-cut superiority in talent. Unfortunately for Denver, it was doomsday in the dome as the Cowboy defense dominated and the orange was crushed. Doomsday defense collected five quarterback sacks, caused eight turnovers, and set the tone for an offense that ranged from sputtering to spectacular. Shotgun formation, Preston Pearson and Tony Dorsett in the backfield, along with Roger Staubach. A three-man rush again. Roger goes deep across the middle. Way downfield, and Butch Johnson caught! Touchdown! 
A sensational diving catch by Butch Johnson, the Cowboys' second-year wide receiver. The Cowboys led Denver 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter, and with seven minutes remaining, it was the proper moment for a play they call fire toss 38, halfback lead, fullback pass. Robert Newhouse's touchdown pass to Golden Richards climaxed the decisive victory over the Cinderella Denver Broncos in Super Bowl XII. It was a fitting end of the year 1977, as the Dallas Cowboys, the top offensive and defensive team in the NFL, capped a world championship season with their second Super Bowl victory, 27 to 10.